Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome back into the Color Gemstone Academy. I am your instructor, Paul DC, and this is my YouTube channel, Paul DC Gemstones. Now, at the time of this taping, which is the last day of April in 2021, I'm just a couple subscribers away from 1,500. We've come a long way in a very short time, and I couldn't have done it without all of your participation. Now, if you have not yet subscribed or if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. I know it says subscribe, but it's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a penny, but it helps me to continue to do all of these lessons for you. Okay, so today, this is decidedly a Caribbean vibe. And the reason for that is going to be clear in just a moment. This is my St. Martin shirt. What is it to say at the, uh, some sort of club, but it's not, I'm not really in the club. I just bought, <laughs> I just bought this when we were in St. Martin on a cruise one time, but this is going to be episode 59. And it is all about a gemstone that I can't believe I haven't done before. I guess I didn't get an, a request for it because I've been busy with your requests. Um, but it's about Larimar and Larimar is really a very popular, a very interesting gemstone with a very interesting story. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay. So the first obvious question is what is Larimar? Well, Larimar is a type of pectolite. It is a, it is volcanic in origin. It's called pectolite. Now I know what you're thinking. What the heck is pectolite? <laughs> pectolite is a mineral that basically forms in a volcano and it has a chemical composition. It's an acid silicate hydrate of calcium and sodium. So basically pectolite is found all over the world, but Larimar is only found in the Dominican Republic. Now, why is that? Because Larimar is a blue form of pectolite. And the reason it only has ever occurred there is in this particular area, which is the Bajarona pro province of the Dominican Republic. It there's, uh, we always talk about trace elements. Basically copper has replaced the calcium in this particular instance. And the only place this has ever happened. And the only place this has ever been mined is in the Dominican Republic and it's called Larimar. Okay, so I have been, as most of you know, on the shopping channels as a host for many, many, many years, and I sold quite a lot of Larimar in my time. Also, if you've ever been on a cruise ship or maybe you've ever vacationed in the Dominican Republic or gone into any jewelry store in the Caribbean, you've probably heard of Larimar or you've seen it and you thought, well, it's really, really pretty. Um, but there's really a fascinating story because although we think of this as a relatively recent find, in the gem world, there is a story and it's actually in the records in the Dominican Republic that there was a Dominican priest by the name of Father Miguel Domingo, Domingo Fuertes Loren, <laughs> Father Miguel Domingo Fuertes Loren. And he applied for uh, permission to mine and exploit the mine of a certain blue rock he had discovered. Now at that time, nobody had ever heard of pectolite. Nobody knew what it was. And I don't even know why the, the priest was trying to get permission to mine it unless he had to pay for all of those names that he had. <laughs> Miguel, uh, Miguel Domingo Fuertes Loren. Anyway, he was of the Barahona province and he found the rock and he applied for permission to mine it. That was denied. So that was that until about the mid 1970s. And in the mid 1970s, in fact, it was 1974, there was a local by the name of Miguel Mendez, and he was walking the beach with a Peace Corps volunteer by the name of Norman Rilling. And he showed this beautiful blue stone that they thought had washed up from the sea. And so Norman says to Miguel, well, what is this stone called? So Miguel, when asked by the Peace Corps volunteer what the stone was called, he put two and two together. Basically, his daughter's name was Larissa, L-A-R. And then the Spanish word for C is Mar. Like in French, I think it's M-E-R, but in Spanish, it's M-A-R. And so Lara Mar was born, the stone of the sea that had the first three letters of his daughter's name. 
Well, what they found out is it really didn't come from the sea at all. Okay, so this beautiful gemstone called Laramar that looks like the colors of the Caribbean Sea did not come from the Caribbean Sea. So how the heck did it wind up on the beach where they were walking? Well, there's a story behind that as well. Remember, volcanic in origin, so you're usually finding volcanoes, which really become mountains. So there's a, a mountain range, and it is called Bajaruco. Bajaruco uh, is the, the mountain, and then the river that flows from that is predictably has the same name, uh, Bajaruco. And it's kind of a brittle stone. Uh, when it's not packed together into the, the, what you see in the, the gemstone form. So it's connected with other rocks and it's tumbling down in this river, hitting other rocks and probably breaking up and breaking up. And it becomes an alluvial deposit that ends up on the beach. So people thought it came from the beach, but it actually came washing down uh, that mountain. So that's where it comes from. And that's how it ended up on the beach. Okay, so let's talk about that color for a little bit, that beautiful blue color and where the, it comes from. Well, I'm going to show you on your screen some pictures of pectolite. Remember I said pectolite can be found in many, many, many places, but only the blue pectolite is found in the Dominican Republic. Well, on your screen you'll see some sort of gray or clear mineral. You might see some other colors, maybe tinges of pink or, or of yellow. And that's kind of quite common in all of those other pectolites. But remember that that lighter color comes from the calcium that we were talking about. Now, it was substituted in this particular mine in the Dominican Republic with copper. For those of you that watched any of my episodes on turquoise, the blue color of that turquoise comes from the element of copper. And I always said you can't have turquoise without copper. Well, guess what? You can't have Larimar without copper either. Okay, so as is my custom in doing some of these lessons on gemstones, I talk about those physical, chemical uh, attributes of the gemstone and what makes it different from other gemstones. So first of all, what is that chemical composition? I mentioned it earlier. It is an acid silicate hydrate of calcium and sodium. However, when you get that blue color that comes out of the Caribbean, the Dominican Republic, that is where that calcium gets replaced by copper and thus the blue color. Now, what is that crystal structure? Remember crystal structure, the gems have different type of crystal structures. Like when you look at the garnets, they're cubic. And if you look at the um, uh, sapphires or hexagonal, um, you look at this one, it's what they call triclinic. So that would be the crystal structure of the pectolite, whether it's the Laramar version or the one that doesn't have the blue color. How about the hardness? Now, not your hardest gemstone. Uh, it is between a four and a half and five on the Mohs scale of hardness. For those of you that are new, the Mohs scale of hardness literally is a, a, a table one to 10 that tells you what gem will scratch another gem. Does it mean you can't wear it? Of course you can wear it. This is, this is an example of some Larimar that we bought. Judy and I were in the Dominican, Dominican Republic. We were actually at a resort watching the Zac Brown Band. And this is a little flip-flop made out of Larimar. And I was shocked at how, much, how expensive it was. But um, yes, you can wear it in jewelry. Um, I would be careful about you know, that hardness. So definitely store it in a place where it can't be scratched by other gemstones. Now there's all, another part of a gemstone that they call tenacity or the toughness of the gem. And that's the ability to withstand cracking and chipping. Well, this is considered a little bit more brittle than most gemstones. And it probably ex it exhibited a lot of that, um, that chipping or, uh, natural polishing when it was coming that being washed down uh, and ended up on the beach. However, when you get something right out of the mine, you're going to have to do a little bit more polishing on that. But it's it is not really necessarily special care. And there are no treatments that create that blue color. But like all gemstones, treat it with care and respect because you want it to last a long so, time. So now we get to the part of how they measure the sparkle of the gemstone. And that's what's called the refractive index. 
very high on a diamond. There's other uh, faceted stones that are very high. This is kind of right there in the middle. Has a little bit of luster. I wouldn't really call it sparkle. And it's a 1.631 to 1.642. That will be the refractive index of your Larimar. And then finally, we get to something called the specific gravity. And I always describe that as the heft of the gemstone. How heavy does it feel compared to the size of the stone that you're looking at? Uh, and this one is actually pretty high. It's a 2.84 to 2.90. So kind of in the neighborhood of what you might find in something like a citrine or uh, uh, an amethyst, but not quite so high that would put it in the area of four, which is a sapphire and a ruby. But that would be the heft of the stone or this, uh, the specific gravity. Over my uh, more than 30 years of being in the shopping channel business and the jewelry business, I've had a lot of questions from people over the years. You know, maybe they've been on that cruise ship, maybe they've been in one of those fine jewelry stores in any of the islands in the Caribbean. And they've all said, and especially I was doing some pretty good prices on this on the, on the, uh, on the channels that I worked. A lot of them said, why is it just so darned expensive? when you look at the prices in some of these stores in the Caribbean or on the cruise ships. Well, there's a reason that it is, it is expensive. When you consider it is probably 30 times more rare than Tanzanite. Now, wait a minute, you're saying, how, how can you say that? How do you say that it is 30 times more rare? Well, in the Dominican Republic, in that in those mountains in the Barahona province, there is only one kilometer square where this gem has ever been actively mined. Let me put this in perspective for you. When I visited the Tanzanite mines in East Central Africa and Tanzania, it was in the Marilani Hills outside of the city of Arusha in the country of Tanzania. And it took a long time to get there. And once you get there, there's 30 kilometers, different blocks. They had the A block, the B block, C block, D block, all of this in Tanzania. And 30 kilometer square area where tanzanite is mined. And I think we can all agree tanzanite's a relatively scarce gemstone, like most gemstones are. In this case, one kilometer square that's one thirtieth the mining area of the Tanzanite mines. But more importantly, to put it into perspective for those of us who live in the United States, a kilometer is just over half of a mile. So if you imagine a half of a mile square, and that's all the area in the world that this incredible gemstone has ever been mined. Okay, so there's a second reason why the cost is relatively high compared to other sort of opaque or translucent gemstones is because it's mined in much the same primitive way that it would have been mined 100 or 200 years ago if they were mining it 200 years ago, which they weren't. Um, so no big earth moving machines, no generators. Uh, it's basically mom and pops type going in there with a shovel, digging into the side of the mountain, looking for the, the blue stone when you can find it, uh, <clears throat> crawling in, not, not a lot of places, very difficult to breathe. Um, maybe you have a flashlight, as I said, not a lot of generators. So the output of this stone is not really great. There's no, this, it, it, the mining is not controlled by the government of the Dominican Republic. There's no big mining consortium that is putting a lot of money into that mining. It's done really the old fashioned way. So when you have not a big supply and still a pretty big worldwide demand, well, you know what they say about the law of supply and demand. If you have a lot more demand than you have supply, the prices naturally go up. And that's the story of Larimar. Okay, so before I um, close this chapter, literally this chapter on Larimar in the Colored Gemstone Academy, what is it that I'm looking for when I'm trying to buy in quantities, and we talked about it's still relatively scarce, 
what do I look for when I'm looking for Laramar? Well, there's two basic ways when, and basically for me, I'm usually going to a trade show like the Tucson Gem Show. And usually this is, a, I'm not seeing this in rough form in places like the AGTA, which is the Convention Center, or JCK. Uh, I'm going to where kind of south of 95, I think it is, uh, south of the Speedway, they, they call it. And you'll see a lot of these places, vendors that have rough material. And usually you'll either see a big bucket, and here's the kind of rough that you'll see in there. It's going to be, it looks like a, like a boulder. You might see a lot of, a little bit of blue. You'll see some gray, some dark black in there. And there's a price per kilo. So you buy it by the kilo. Um, and it's a relatively more affordable way to buy the gemstone because then you have to process it. The problem with buying it that way is you don't really know what you have until you peel the onion, until you start taking layers off of it, polishing it, cutting it, things like that. And that all costs money. Another way, actually I think I have one here, right here. I know I have, always have these gem, gems behind me. Um, sometimes you'll see it where it is slabbed and it looks something like this. And this is also translucent. You still see those other darker colors of the, of the regular rock that's in pectolite. Um, but when you buy it in this form, you're going to pay a little bit more, probably a lot more on your price per kilo because they've exposed it for you. You know exactly what you're getting, what you're getting. What you see is what you get. So this is, I think, the best way, unless you really have been in the business a long time and you know it, where it came from an area where your yield is going to be good because that's what it's always about. It's going to be what when you buy kilos, what's the yield? How much good gem material do you get out of all of that? And that's true of every gemstone, not just Laramar. Well, that's about my time. So that's going to end this lesson on the Laramar. Remember, if you have not yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It is absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a thing, but it helps me a lot. I still want to be the largest weekly free gem classes on YouTube, and you can help me get there. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week with another lesson on gemstones. Bye, everybody.